In this episode, I'm going to be welding the cage. So the first thing I'm going to do is weld as many of the joints as I possibly can on the cage while it's still tacked to the base plates. Here's the cage right now. Got all of that. Now what I'm going to do is just start welding everything together because it's all mocked up. And uh, I'm going to have to drop the cage and remove the base plates to drop it down to weld around the tops. But in the meantime, I'm going to weld everything that I possibly can. So that way the cage has as much structure and integrity that it has. So that way when I break the base plates, nothing just like folds in or whatever on it. So, so yeah, just welding time. For the welding, I'll show more or less every single bead that I've laid on this cage. I've tried to have the camera recording as much as I possibly could. Um, if you don't see a weld being laid on camera and you're really paying attention to every single seam, I can guarantee you that all the seams are welded. Uh, sometimes the camera just shut off or I forgot to set it up. And the reason I'm showing all the welds is so that you guys can get the best understanding for you know how complicated it is to weld the cage up yourself if your case you're curious. So if you could just take note of like all the positions I'm in, you know, like how hard it is to weld some of those areas, the different like how awkwardly I'm holding the gun at some points and you know, all that sort of stuff that kind of goes into it where you don't even think about, but then once you actually go to weld the cage up, you realize like, you know, a lot of that stuff is kind of like out of reach or a lot harder to weld than you'd think. <laughs> These are basically all welded up. The majority of the cage is also welded up, so really I'm just going to go and remove the, the base plates now and drop it down. With a lot of the cage welded now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break the tacks holding the, holding the cage to that base plate, break the tacks holding the cage to that base plate, and break the tacks holding the cage to the base plate back there, right? So all of it's going to be loose. Then I'm going to remove that front base plate so the whole cage will drop down, right? And then once it drops down, that roof support right there will be able to clear the roof structure, right? So then it'll drop like that. And then once it's dropped like that, I can bring the entire cage forward, right? And once I bring the entire cage forward, the whole main hoop can drop down to the floor. And the floor sits down about four inches. So altogether, when it brings forward and I drop it down, I'll gain about four inches of room to weld around the tops of the cage. Now you can also cut holes in the roof to do this. Now the issue with that is I have my whole roof support over here. So you're talking about eight different holes in the roof, which is kind of ridiculous. Then on top of that, I have to weld around those, which can't even be like reached from the top. So it's not even practical. And more so I need to move the cage forward so I can weld around the back over here, which I can't do. So it, it, it just needs to move forward period. Okay, what some people also do as well is they cut holes on their floor and then do this, but the thing is, is, you know, when you cut the hole in your floor, you're going to have to patch it. I think that's a little bit weaker than just moving all of this forward. 
And then on top of that, if you actually have to have your cage slide forward, you're gonna have to end up having like huge holes in your floor. So really the only way to do it is to make like a box base plate drop in and pull it forward. So that's what I'm gonna do. I got this bit on the Dremel I'm using to grind down the welds. I got a little cut disc I'm using to grind down the welds. Um, I've then taken like a sledgehammer and kind of keep hitting it to knock it loose. I'm also using an angle grinder to get all of these welds down here because it's much faster to do with an angle grinder. Uh, and then also using a sledge with a screwdriver to basically go and hit these welds to break them loose from the base plate. And so that's kind of like my method for getting these loose. And yes, it is a pain. And uh, yeah, try and use as a minimum amount of tax to the chassis and tube as possible. Please. I messed up this base plate. Just gonna straighten this out. There we go. Gotta go weld that back into place. Yeah, freaking, that was such a pain though to get out. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. But they are out now. So the fronts are out. Just gonna continue breaking the welds on all of these back ones, and then I'll show you dropping it down. Oh wow, okay, so I finally broke all the welds on everything and it's such a pain to do like if you can just make sure you put your welds in an area where you can actually reach it with the Dremel or with like some type of cutter. I a lot of pounding with the screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver and a hammer to actually like break stuff loose but now it's pretty loose so I'm going to try and drop it. That yeah, this needs to drop forward. Okay then. Holy cow. Oh, perfect. Yes. Since the cage is dropped now, it's time to get back to welding. Before putting the cage back in, I also went and welded up the front base plates because those were never fully welded while they were in the car.
Now I'm going to primer the top and any hard to reach areas of the cage. I'm going to be primering it with weld through primer. And I'm just painting it with weld through primer because a lot of those areas are going to be hard to reach. And I know that, um, you know, once the cage actually fits in there and then because the cage fits so tight to the roof area that I'm not actually going to be able to spray paint on a lot of those areas once the cage is actually up there, which is why I'm spraying it with primer to protect it. But not only is it going to be primer, it's weld through primer. So in case I do overspray onto some areas that I'm going to weld in the future and I can't even like, you know, weld prep it over there, I actually took everything like down to bare metal and then painted a weld through primer on top of it and then put it up. So that way, if I needed to weld any other sections, um, I could just go through the weld through primer and still make contact with the car and, you know, make a complete weld. I hope that makes sense. So yeah, now I put the cage back up there, which is actually pretty cool because the fitment is like ridiculously tight. Like that? Yep, fitment game on fleek. Dope. It just stays. That's what I'm saying. That's, that's how you know you have proper cage fitment. That's pretty good. When it tucks up into the roof. Like, it's literally... It's literally... It's floating. not on the floor. It's, 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 floating. it's floating. Yeah, it's actually floating. Yep. So as you guys can tell, that thing just tucks right up into the roof. We just gotta push it up in there. And then it just stays. Like, it's just straight hovering off the ground. Because that's how tight the fitment is up there. Which is good. Because that means that thing isn't going to have any play. Alright, and now I'm actually going to be welding it in. Now, as you can see here, I've uh, primered the inside of the base plate. Now, usually I don't primer the inside because, you know, because the rear base plates, those are blocked off from all external oxygen. You need oxygen to create rust. However, over here, there's actually a little pocket that the um, base plate is going to end up covering. And so there, it is actually going to be exposed to oxygen. And so to prevent the rust, or at least try and prevent it as best I can, I just spray this with weld through primer. And that's just, you know, just in case I overspray, which I did obviously on purpose. Um, I can still weld through it and it's not going to contaminate. So I painted the base plate like that because that's stripped down to bare metal. Um, weld through primer on everything. So this cage is now prepped so I can toss this thing up, slide the base plate under there and then weld that in place. And then, yeah, just basically weld all the rest of the bars. So I'm going to align up just with like where the old tacks were and then basically just uh, that's how I'm going to know it's aligned right. I'm just going to weld it there. Now, for whatever reason, a little bit of the cage kind of like went after shape after kind of like moving it around and doing all that sort of stuff. So um, if that happens, kind of just took a friend, had him pull on the cage, just maybe over about an eighth of an inch or, you know, a quarter of an inch and then uh, welded it in place while he held it there. Oh, oh. oh. All right, bye, bitch. So the next thing to move on to was the dash bar or knee bar, I believe, as uh, Formula D calls it. It's basically just a bar that goes kind of like where your dash is at and it connects your two side hoops together. On my specific cage, because of the placement of uh, the side hoops, it actually just needed to be a straight tube going across. A lot of guys will end up needing to put bends in it, but mine was just, you know, straight tube, two simple notches, and then I had my uh, dash bar in place and I needed to weld that up. All right, well, I just finished welding the cage in place right now. 
which by the way is one of the worst things I've ever experienced in my entire life. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim up the dash bar that goes over here just because right now it's a little bit too wide so it doesn't want to slide down all the way and I want to make it touch the bottom right here. This right here is for the steering column so this is the steering column bracket. Now that right there isn't reinforced so basically if you bolt the steering column to it which you can't because it's not even threaded it just kind of uh, flexes down the entire sheet metal. I have the stock dash bar right here basically and this little area is for the uh, steering column to bolt to. So what I'm going to do is just cut that off right there then bolt it up to where it should be and then uh, weld that to the actual uh, new dash bar that I have. So yeah, trim this bar, make it fit, and then also cut that off, and then put that there, and then weld the two together. So here's the piece I cut out, and as you can tell, it's supposed to go right here. I can take the two screws that are supposed to hold the whole steering column in place, and I can basically just bolt this up right now. So this is bolted up right here, as you can see. Now there's a little bit of gap here, so what I'm going to do is just... Uh, keep trimming up this dash bar so that way you can drop all the way to make contact here Once it actually makes contact here, then I'll go tack it in place Also something I'm going to do is remove all the rust off of this so that way we get it back together all nice and clean And uh, trim off the back side as well because I don't need that I have my piece trimmed up now. It looks pretty good I got off as much rust as I could. I couldn't get all of it though just because of all the cracks Anyways, this is weld through primer because I'm going to weld along this edge and this edge so I need it to be weld through Okay then, you get the idea. <coughs> okay, so I have it painted in a uh, weld through primer. Of course, I've like rubbed this off too because basically this isn't going to be removed, so this is the last time any of this is be separated and all that. Okay, so I've made it flush with the edges. Of course, it's basically centered because it self centers itself. All right, and now I'm gonna put my dash bar on top. Now, I've also put weld through primer on the bottom of this because that's going to go against here and there's going to be some openings because um, I'm, I'm not going to fully weld the bead over here. I'll probably just do some little stitches or something. So because of that, I've welded the bottom so it doesn't rust. Okay, actually. I just removed this because I actually ended up trimming this over here so that way the tube can drop down a lot farther and actually weld to this place which is what I want it to weld to. Let me just go hammer it down E. Yeah, they're both for sure even now on one side to another and uh, spot on. Time to weld. So having welded the dash bar as well as the rest of the cage, I then went and moved on to actually welding the cage to the car itself. So my cage has such tight fitment that I can actually weld it along six points up front alone. So there's uh, two for the two side hoops to kind of like the, the door openings. Then you have the side hoops to the roof structure and then you also have the roof support uh, two points to the roof structure. So it's six total points in the front. And then in the back, there's an additional two points where um, the rear supports actually touch the roof structure as well. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to actually stick my welding gun up in there just because the fitment was so tight. You literally just can't like fit it in there unless you have like a one inch stick out on it. So I left that be, although it's basically like touching the car right there and I just welded um, the other six points in the front. Side hoop is welded to the door area right here. Side hoop is welded up top to the roof structure. 
roof support is welded all along the roof structure, so. He's so got one point there, one point there, one point there. And then in the back, um, it actually fits so tight that I can't even get the, um, the welding tip to go in far enough to where I can actually weld it. So instead there's like literally like an inch of stick out. So I'm not going to be welding there. But as you could picture, you could easily weld over there had I actually been able to get the room. All right, so that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Picked up on a thing or two and learned a bit of stuff. Uh, next episode I'm going to be going over is going to be uh, anti-wheel intrusion bars, which is another critical point in a uh, FD cage or just cages in general. All right, so I'll see you guys there. All right.